Even though we won't get to celebrate Halloween the way we're used to this weekend, you won't have to worry because there's one place where you can go and celebrate Halloween all year round. Yeah, it comes complete with haunted castles, spooky spirits that date back more than 3,000 years. So joining us this morning with a bit of a history lesson for you, okay, of Halloween is Travel Zoo editor Gabe Saglier. So welcome back to the Pick Some More News, Gabe. Hey Thank guys. you for being here. Happy Halloween. Gabe, Happy usually Halloween. you're taking us somewhere really warm and tropical, but yeah. today we're going history. You've been traveling to Ireland for the last couple of years to, I guess, trace the history of Halloween. Hey, listen, we've been heading out there for the last decade to cover St. Patrick's Day, but for the last two years, uh, during this time, we've been going out there to discover what it, now the consensus is, is the origin of Halloween. The first, what would have been called Samhain back then, the Celtic word for summer's end. But the ceremony, that hill you're seeing right there, the Hill of Ward, I visited for the first time two years ago. And through archaeological digs, through carbon dating of remains that have been found there, and through a ton of storytelling over many generations, this has been now determined to be where the first Samhain ceremony, uh, what, what does that we mean? know as Halloween, would have well, Samhain means summer's end. So what happened oh. uh, back 3,000 years ago is that October 31st was the end of the calendar year, the end of summer, the beginning okay. of winter. People had harvested all their crops, and we were about to start hunkering down for the winter months. But that October 31st night uh, was considered to be the night when the veil between our world and the other world was at its thinnest, meaning that a lot of spirits could sort of cross back and forth. Mm. Um, and that's basically now been embraced so by the Irish. So did you feel any of those spirits when you stood at that spot? Well, it's a it's a beautiful spot. Uh, it's about 40 miles uh, sort of northwest of Dublin. And you're on this spot and you really are seeing as far as the eye can see 360 degrees. And they would light these bonfires back then across these hills to sort of signal the fact that, hey, it's October 31st. It's the end of the calendar year. And we're celebrating the bounty of the harvest and now getting ready for winter. But we're also looking out for spirits that may be moving in from the beyond. So pumpkins oh. weren't also, the, I'm a big pumpkin fan, if anybody has <laughs> never yeah. wondered. Never knew um, that. <laughs> but what, what, they didn't used to only carve pumpkins, they used to carve something else? So it used to be turnips, okay? So what, okay. what happened, they would, they oh, same would uh, carve these turnips, uh, and uh, then, you know, these bonfires, they would gather these embers and these turnips, and that, that would light their way back home. Uh, and then they would come, become decorations in, in the windows. Now, when the Irish immigrated to the U.S., uh, turnips are a little tougher to carve, and not as plentiful as pumpkins in the U.S., so we, we basically switched that tradition to now carving pumpkins mm. for Halloween. Also, the mask concept, you know, because we th this idea was that spirits were sort of coming in uh, through that veil into this world, masks were worn as a way to sort of ward off and confuse these mischievous spirits. Uh, and that's why this concept of wearing a mask for Halloween um, you know, sort of uh, was born and uh -huh. then trick or treating because it was the end of harvest and everybody's pantries mm -hmm. were full. Kids would go around door to the door and say, hey, could we have a taste of those apples, oh. taste of those turnips? This idea that we were asking our neighbors for a little treat. Of what I don't just think I've ever harvested. asked my neighbor if can I, I want to taste can of I the try your turnip. turnip? Please. I'm try your turnip. Yeah, the healthy Halloween turnip. started 3000 years ago. Yeah. I got to tell you, though, this is just blowing my mind because so many times we, you know, think about Halloween and Transylvania and all these other traditions. And, and yet you're saying, no, none of that's true. This is where it started in Ireland, which which is really yeah. crazy. So, um, so for folks who are trying to celebrate back here at home, right? There's more than 400 haunted castles that they can, if they can't get there, can you see some of these online? Yeah. So that's the thing. There's a variety of festivals. Uh, Puka Festival that started last year. Dairy Halloween up in Northern Ireland, considered by USA Today one of the big biggest uh, and best uh, Halloween parties in the world. There's a the Bram Stoker Festival in Dublin. They're on hold or virtual this year. But yeah, a lot of uh, haunted castles. So this is Ballygally Castle Hotel. Uh, this was uh, a 200 year old building in Northern Ireland. I stayed here, it's a hotel now. Wow. But it's, it's purported, yeah, there it is today. Purportedly haunted because in that tower at the very top, uh, the man of the house uh, imprisoned his wife because she would not bear him a son. What? Uh, and in her grief, Wow. She jumped off that tower, and to this day, you can hear her wailing, uh, calling out for I the love Sunday So you story. stayed there? Did you hear any I of the wailing? There. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I didn't hear or see anything, but I got to tell you, you go up to that very top tower, you can yeah. actually visit that room. Spooky. Yeah, it's a little eerie. Yeah. You know, you, yeah, you, everything quiets down. You're, something, yeah. you know, the ambiance is definitely spooky. Well, sure. yeah, I mean, when you get into an old castle like that, I don't even need to know that it's haunted for True, it to turn right? the lights off, and I would be uh, a little spooked out. OG would never go anywhere yeah. near it. Uh, Professor Sagley, uh, what are you doing later today, this <laughs> afternoon, to give out the history of Halloween? So listen, we were there live last year. This year we're there uh, virtual. Okay, so at 2 o'clock this afternoon on Travel Zoo's Facebook page, we're taking a virtual road trip across Ireland visiting the Hill of Ward that we just showed you, mm -hmm. uh, talking to, to folklore experts. We'll even interview a witch 
uh, and uh, yeah, that's happening at two o'clock. Uh, our sort of virtual road trip through Ireland, wow. the home of Halloween. You left the best that. part for last, interviewing a witch. Yeah. Where do you yeah. find these people? Winifred. She's quite a fascinating character. You're gonna love her. Winifred the witch. Winifred the witch. Winifred. <laughs> special relationship, you know. Oh, okay. What, what kind of relationship? Well, it's, are we gonna be getting invitations <laughs> sometime soon? You'll have to tune in. Just so you know, I, I, I am on a, um, I, could, I can marry people. I, I'm an ordained minister. I can, oh, I, I just, hear this. Okay, yes. well, uh, let me talk to my wife. <laughs> that would be problematic. I mean, you know, rules are bent on Halloween. Let's be, let's That's be very fun. true. <laughs> All Gabe, right. thank you. Thanks for joining us. All right, guys, happy Halloween. You happy too. Halloween.